Hello my soccer universe, to a quick review of what happened on match day 1 in the Europa League on an exclusive week, again like we had for the Champions League and the week before we have already match day 2. First thoughts I gotta say, um, the Europa League delivered exactly as many goals as did the Champions League last week, we have an average of 2.54 goals, however the results were not as lopsided, we had only 4 games where teams won by 3 goals or more as compared to the Champions League where we had 6, we did not have a 9-2 scoreline obviously and the highest win was by a four goal lead and that was Ajax who actually lead the table early and that was actually quite surprising to see to be honest because Ajax in the Eredivisie is kind of a mixed bag for now. We also had five draws as compared to three. Where am I getting with all these numbers? I think that the Europa League is a way more level competition than the Champions League, which actually intuitively makes already sense. Because in the Champions League, we have all these top teams that are head and shoulders above. And then we have some smaller teams that scrape into this competition of the Giants. We have the Europa League, you get kind of the second tier of the big leagues, but also the top teams from the others, which makes for a much more interesting competition. When I look at overall trends after this match day one, I couldn't really point out that one nation did better than another. I mean, yes, the Dutch teams got two wins and a draw. That I think is something that stands out and also two of the three Istanbul Giants did really well however then there's Besiktas who got completely flattened by Ajax so give and take a little bit. I'm also a teeny bit happy that probably the most overlooked match of this entire round FCSB against RFS delivered us five goals and some great goals in there as well and yeah the German teams I don't want to be gloating in any way, but German teams only got two draws. One team is definitely happier than the other one in there as well. Yeah, Frankfurt definitely dropped the ball on their home game against Pilsen. Now in this video, I'm going to give you longer edits of the short videos that I recorded that you've already seen probably on my channel. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the overall situation in the Europa League. There were two standard ties at the start of the Europa League on Wednesday. The first one was Turkish against Greek champions Galatasaray against Pauk. Great atmosphere as always. Galatasaray all over Pauk, especially Usiman, always at the center of attention. However, they were also missing quite some. The opening goal came early in the second half when uh, Osiman Heda is then fumbled into the net by Baba. A little bit against the run of play because Galatasaray definitely missed to make it 2-0. Constantelius gets an equalizer for Pauk and you thought maybe there's a upset in there. However, then Ozyman with a header assists Akgün who makes it 2-1 just 10 minutes later. And then in stoppage time Icardi converts 3-1. Fortunately, I have to say since I like Pauk, Galatasaray deserved that win. In the other standard fixture, we had a little upset against his former team Erik ten Haag's Manchester United only manager 1-1 one, one against 20. Despite having the majority of the game taking even the lead through a beautiful shot by Christian Eriksen, however he also spills the ball in the second half to allow Lamas to run through on goal and getting the equalizer. There were some great saves by the 20 goalkeeper in there as well. On a different day, maybe United would have won, but this was hard fighting 20 who actually earned themselves the point at all. Trafford. We had five goals each in the early kickoffs. First in Alkmaar we had Elfsburg being the more dangerous team even getting the lead in the 23rd minute but then Ruben van Bommel, Mark van Bommel's son, scores two in the 44th and right after have to re-establish lead. Hedlund equalizes then for Elfsburg again and then it's a parrot penalty that give AZ a really hard fought win. High above the polar circle Bode get a famous 3-2 win over Porto with Jens Peter Hauge being the story of the game. He has a beautiful assist to the equal through Hög in the 15th minute and scores two himself, the second one of which came already with Bode, a man down. Porto, really, really poor showing of theirs, despite going the first and the last goal in a 3-2 loss. Over in Hamburg, Lazio made short shrift of Dinamo Kiev, scoring early through Bule Dia, who also gets a third goal in between. Nigerian striker Dele Bashiru actually makes it 2-0. It was all Lazio. There were also then two red cards in short succession, Ragani and Noslin for an elbow, but overall very convincing win and a good start for Lazio. Slavia also had little problems with Ludo Goretz, Jurasek and Kitil getting the two goals. Could have been more this goal and this was one-way traffic by the Czechs. Egolazo, or better in German, ein Supertor of Mörstedt in the 90th minute salvages a point for Hoffenheim with Mörstedt scoring in a very Ibrahimovic-like manner. Before that, Midjula had more of the chances, but the game was overall even and so yeah, 
I think it feels more like a point gained for Hoffenheim. At the Côte d'Azur, Barangea gave Real Sociedad an early lead with a brilliant shot from the edge of the box. But Nice were a little bit more in the game. They get it deserved equalizer through Rosario, who actually lost the ball in the build-up to the Real Sociedad goal and then had a big chance to win it. However, Gesson's penalty is easily saved by goalie Remiro, and the game fizzles out into a 1-1 draw. The first leaders in the huge Europa League league table are Ajax after smacking Besiktas 4-0 at home. This was one-way traffic and it was only a matter of time until they score. In the end it's Fitz Jim who taps it in from a short distance and the second half both scores two and Kenneth Taylor also gets one in on the action. This could have been more Ajax looking really really fine. The standout fixture of the entire match they won between Roma and Athletic Club ends in a 1-1 draw. It was a so-and-so game. I mean, with ebbed and flow, early chances fell to Athletic. Then Roma had a real good period of dominant possession, where they actually get the lead after Angelino. Angelino Cross is headed in by Dovbik, but Roma cannot really hold on. Athletic Club also have the ace up the sleeve by having Nico Williams on the bench. He comes on and late on Athletic Club then were, I'm stopping short of saying pushing for the equalizer, but they get the equalizer through Paredes. No, not Roma's Paredes. It was a proper goal after a couple of headers. Late on there was a free header for Roma, but no punch behind it. Probably the most eye-catching result of the entire evening was Frankfurt 3, Victoria Pilsen 3. That's a game that Frankfurt threw away. They had more of the game, they had a lot of possession, however Pilsen really kept them under control if you would like. Etikite with a really nice 1-2 with Rasmussen scores the go-ahead goal but almost immediately the Frankfurt defense cannot really get the ball away and in the end it falls to Schultz who just yanks it in from outside the box. In the second half Frankfurt come out, they quickly score two goals through Dina and Bimbe who just had come on and then also Christensen just a few minutes later and you think Frankfurt cruising to an easy win. No! Late on, they again cannot clear it. Adu scores the 3-2 and then in stoppage time, again, they cannot clear the ball. The Frankfurt defense was really unsorted that evening and Yemelka then heads it in from a short distance. Let's go to the early games where Fenerbahce get another win over Union saint Julius 2-1. This was a game that looked long time that Fenerbahce are cruising to a win. So Yunchi scoring early on, then McAllister is sent off for Union saint Julius in the 74th minute. Burgess scores an own goal. It all looks going Fenerbahce's way. However, late on the penalty foul. Fenerbahce players also sent off. Ivanovic steps up but sees his penalty saved by fellow countryman Livakovic. But just a little bit later Sykes pulls one back and you really thought that Union saint Gerardas playing in a really nice blackout uniform I gotta say might get an equalizer but in the end Fenerbahce hang on. Meanwhile Rangers already struck in the first minute. I think it was 55 seconds in when Bayrami taps it in after um, Dessas hit the post. Rangers more or less in control and Malmö. Malmö not really conjuring up a lot and in the end it's McCosland who scores the second one and sees the points go home to Glasgow. It was a rather contentious end to Braga's 2-1 win over Maccabi Tel Aviv. Maccabi Tel Aviv led for most of the game. Yes, Braga were the more dominant team. However, they give away a penalty that Davida then converts. Tel Aviv have a halftime lead. Second half, really, the wave and wave of attacks of Braga late on Bruma in the 80th minute gets an equalizer and you think okay it's a draw there's four minutes up on on the board maybe with a lucky lucky punch the lucky punch then comes through a contentious penalty call where the Tel Aviv player goes down wants to soften his fall and the ball goes on his hand it survives VAR review Bruma slots it home and then in a stoppage right here, it got more and more extended. I think it went over 10 minutes. Two Maccabi Tel Aviv players are sent off for yellow red cards. Really horrific to refereeing in Braga that evening. If you were not planning to put any attention on FCSB over RFS, well, you missed a 4-1 win. You actually missed also quite some nice goals in there and the early goals all came in that game with Birgit Gea already in 8th minute putting FCSB up. RFS actually equalized in the 23rd and then Stefanescu takes advantage of some really sloppy defending, makes it 2-1 at the half time and then last killer Olaro adds two more in the second half. Some really nice shots in there. In another Olympic battle, 
of uh, OL. This time they get the win. Conference League winners Olympiakos were not really up for that game. I had the feeling Cherki and Ben Rama in the second half seal a very deserved victory for Lyon. Spurs' game against Karabakh had to be postponed by almost 14 minutes due to traffic in North London. And then Spurs seemingly decided to make it a little bit of a challenge by Dragosin getting sent off already the eighth minute with a really stupid red card where he loses the ball and then pulls down the player. But Brennan Johnson four minutes later gives Spurs the lead. Saar just after the half makes it two. Then Bayramov misses a penalty for Karabakh and in the end we have a Solanke goal to get home the three points with a 3-0 win for Spurs. Now if you look at the standings, yes they don't make much sense after match they won, but I added at least the bar to the right that tells you how the chances overall have changed for these teams. And if you look at spot 10, Bodo Glimp, their win against Porto was a huge one. Major disappointment for Porto. And we also see that Rangers, for instance, their way win at Malmö definitely boosted their chances. We also see that Ajax's win improved them. And then we had of course Slavia Praha also getting a big win. Lazio of course too, but you know, that was a little bit more expected and in similar fashion among the biggest disappointments have to be Porto of course but we also see big bars for Malmö who probably at home would have expected a little bit more against Rangers Olympiakos were very disappointing at Lyon yesterday evening and same goes for Dynamo Kiev and Besiktas I mean Besiktas being dead flattened and yes they did not play Giro Immobile and maybe were more focusing on the league it still does not look good on the overall picture I think a whole lot more telling are of course the expected standings. On top nothing changed. Spurs are still very much on top but you see already United have dropped to fifth place whereas Galatasaray and now in second. Huge win over Pauk. This was probably one of the real big games that we had this week. We also see Lazio and Lyon moving up. I would not count much on Roma losing a few spots because we know that Roma have a tough draw. Frankfurt also falling down as to of course Porto who are now behind Bodo Glimt. A little bit expected. Rangers top the second half of the table for now. They also have a relatively tough schedule coming ahead. And we also see that the Greek champions Pauk are now sitting on the edge. 20 have a shot to make it into the playoff round as potentially do FCSB and it is still the unheralded children of the competition in Ludogorets, Ellsberg and RFS that are of course on the bottom. Even less has changed on the side of who are the favorites now. Tottenham a little bit now above United, then the two Roman teams and then we have the two Basque Giants. I think this sounds about right although after having seen what Galatasaray can do with Victor Osim and if Osimhen stays for the entire season. I think we can say that Gladassara could pull an Olympiakos from last season and win a trophy that they already have won once. Not sure how much I would count on Porto or the French teams or any of the other ones, but to me those seven might deliver the winner. Now the second round of matches are all played on Thursday and at the same time as the Conference League. I'm already working on the preview video for that competition as well. And let's face it, there are maybe not that great many standard ties in there. I'm looking to this left Slavia Praha against Ajax, two winners of the first match day. I think that could be an interesting one. I also think Bilbao against AZ and Besiktas against Frankfurt, not too bad. And then a classic Champions League tie in Porto against United. However... The glory days for both teams are very much over at the moment. Then we also have a champion matchup, Pauk against FCSB, that's Greek against Romanian champions, I think is interesting. Rangers, Lyon, maybe. That could also be quite a nice one. And then two very unheralded teams that are making a lot of noise as of late in Europe, which is of course Union saint gilles against Bode Klimt. Okay. So much from match day one in the Europa League. I have to say I really enjoyed that one. I know maybe not the biggest names in there, but I think from a competitive point of view, this is a really, really good competition. And I think the new format also works potentially a little bit better here than in the Champions League. But again, it's new ground. We have to get used to it and we have to see how it will develop. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the Europa League ties this week in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!